Pierre Gasly's long-awaited Formula One debut will come at the Malaysian Grand Prix, replacing Daniel Kvyat at Toro Rosso. Gasly has had to play the waiting game for his chance, an impressive recent form in Japan's Super Formula has put him firmly in title contention a year after winning GP2. Meanwhile, Kvyat's career has continued to stall, and he has scored just four points in his first full season back at Toro Rosso after Red Bull demotion in 2016. F1 fans have been debating the merits of Gasly's promotion and the consequences of another blow to Kvyat's career. Here is a selection of comments from the Autosport forum going the distance it's overdue, but midseason is a little unusual. I can't help but wonder if this is Red Bull getting in a little insurance for if when it loses one or both of Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen at the end of next year. Maximilian Daniel's bad luck was the emergence of Verstappen. Red Bull's hand was more or less forced due to the talent of the Dutchman, although at the time I have also thought it was harsh to demote Kvyat after just a few races in the season, just one race, after he had a podium finish. I guess what Red Bull wanted to see was Kvyat to hunker down in this adversity to make him stronger. It wanted him to push Sainz and to claw his way back into being a top contender for the RBR seat if and when it would be available. Instead, since then Kvyat scored a grand total of eight points over a season and a half compared to 90 points by Sainz during the same period. No matter what else may be going on, but those are pretty damning statistics. Chkale it's complicated with Kvyat it clearly has a lot of talent but he has had a big part in his downfall. Still, he is easily the most mistreated driver in F1 in recent times. I hope he is retained for next year. Helmut Marco still owes him as far as I am concerned. Join the quiet Gasly debate. Sandra the thing with Gasly as if they were 100% sure of him, they'd have put him in for 2017 from the jet-go. Or Red Bull cold have done it during the summer, breaker at any time before or after. To evaluate him now just says that there's still doubt there. A weird double-sided argument I know, but it just strikes me as odd that even a GP2 title, Super Formula race wins on some F1 free practices won't be enough, and that Red Bull is actually saying we want to see you race in F1 first, DAA and F1 quiet hasn't shown anything special in this season and last year. It's a shame. I always considered him a fast driver, but something went wrong. Probably something to do with pressure. GTA it's all part of the system at Red Bull though. The best survive and the weak leave. If Red Bull had persisted with Sebastian Buemi, Jamie Algraswari, and Jean-Eric Verne, F1 could have missed Ricciardo, Verstappen, and Carlos Sainz Jr. today. Theorists in Jilfi don't really get it, they do this to prepare Gasly for next year, but why would you compromise your other driver for next year? Quiet, when Sainz is leaving anyway, only because Sainz should be able to score some more points Red Bull never really cared about where Toro Rosso finished in the Constructors' Championship, so I would ignore part of me thinks Red Bull treated Quiet appallingly, and he never stood a hope of recovery when it demoted him down to Toro Rosso. He wasn't at all bad in the Red Bull, was he? He maybe lacked Ricciardo's underlying pace to the tune of a few tenths all season but he scored a lot of points which is ironic as that's exactly what he hasn't been doing ever since the other part thinks that has lucky to have lasted this long. That has been in a permisilk since it happened, has been performing woefully for 18 months, and massively deserves the boot. MJB5990 I still think Fiat will have a seat at Toro Rosso next year. But it needed to give Gasly a taste and they can't exactly drop Saints at this point considering Hess the one scoring their points. Share this article on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google email.